Okay, so we're gonna be creating a 3D gear. So to refresh our memory, here's some pictures of some gears. We can see that the basic things we're looking for is we're gonna have an outer ring, a hole in the middle, and then the teeth coming out. And you can see that you can put a lot of uh, different details in your gear, and then there's gonna be some uh, thickness to it. All right, let's get started. First, we want to start off by picking out a polygon primitive to use. So we'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cylinder, and then that'll give us a cylinder right here in the middle. Now we'll adjust the inputs in the channel box so we can change the shape of this cylinder. First thing, we'll go ahead and select the word Subdivision Caps. I'll come over here to my viewport, just drag my mouse over here, and middle mouse button drag, so that way I can change the value really easily and I can see it changing. So I'll set it to about 2 and then let's see, next up let's go ahead and adjust our radius. That seems fine. And then our height. And then if you want it to be uh, different than that, you can always come in and type in your other values. But it's just kind of a nice interactive way to see changes using the uh, middle mouse dragging method. Next step, we want to go ahead and delete these middle faces so we can create the hole in our gear. We're going to delete the faces, so we'll right click, go into face mode, and then we can select all of these faces one by one, but that's going to take a long time. So instead, hit space, go to our orthographic view. In our top view, we're seeing a straight up version of the top with no perspective. So what we'll do is in one swoop over here in the top view, we'll do a marquee selection over these top faces. So that's going to select these top faces and the bottom faces, so we can delete them all in one swoop. So I'll hit delete to delete them, and now we have the hole. So I'll hit space to go back to my perspective view. So what we want to do is create faces between these edges. So for that we'll go to edge mode. So we'll right click, choose edge mode, and then now we can double click on the edge to select the entire edge ring. So then I'll hold down shift, double click on the top edge, and you see when I hold down shift it's going to give me a plus sign if I'm adding to my selection. So I've got uh, this edge and this edge, so I want a bridge between them. So I'll hold down shift and right click, and that's going to give me all the options that I want to do to an edge. So down here, it's going to say bridge. So I'll let go on that, and it'll perform a bridge. So you'll notice the bridge looks a little strange. This isn't really what we wanted. So the first thing you want to mess with when you do a bridge is this offset option. So we'll click on the word and drag it until, there we go, until it makes sense, until we've got the edges, the edge loops running where we want them to run. So uh, by default, Maya, when you first do the bridge, it's usually offset at this weird angle. So that's something you've got to mess with. And then next, we have all these divisions running through here that we don't really need. So we'll just lower the divisions. And those are really the only two you need to mess with. If you click away before you start adjusting those settings, remember that they are always in the inputs over here if you didn't delete your history. So if we, uh, we can see the steps. When we created the cylinder, we deleted some components, and then we did a bridge. So I can click on the poly bridge, and that's going to pop this guy up. The same stuff is right here so you can uh, still make adjustments. So you can still make adjustments as long as it's the top input. So for the next step, we want to adjust the radius of this hole. So what we can do is select the edges again, and what we want to do is kind of move it back, right? But we can't, even though I'm saying move, it looks like our move tool isn't really going to get us what we want. So instead, we're going to use our scale tool to scale and move it back. When I'm scaling it uniformly in the middle here, 
that means it's scaling it in all three of the axes. So that may not be what I want. Uh, I don't want it to scale in the Y or else I'm getting this uh, upwards movement. So I only want to scale it in the Z and the X. So to do that, I can click on this square piece right here and you'll see that when I click and drag on it, it turns the axis is yellow, which means that they're selected. So I'll click and hold and just drag this to whatever thickness I want. So we were scaling it with the edges, uh, but just as a side note, I could have selected this face ring and it was the same thing because these faces are just the area between these edges. So just note that that is the same thing as selecting the edges around it. All right, so the next step, we want to add the teeth to this gear, those little parts that stick out. So to do that, we're going to select every other face and then extrude them out. So we'll right click, go to face mode, and I'm just gonna select every other face. If our scale tool is getting in our way, we can always hit Q to go to the select tool. And that way there's no gizmo in our way. I'm just holding down shift to add to my selection. All right, looks like I got everybody. You can always hit four, so that way you can see through your model and make sure you've got everything selected. So I'll hit five to go back to shaded. And now let's extrude these. So we'll hold down shift, right click, and choose extrude face, or control E. All right, so here's our extrusion handle. What we're going to do is pull it out in the Z to get some depth, however long you want. And then let's say we wanted to scale this, kind of taper it down, then to switch our extrude tool from movement, we'll just click once on the square and then that's going to turn it into the scale tool. It's going to give us a uh, scale uniform option. So we just click on the different handles to change that. You don't want to click and hold. So click on the cube, and now I'll click and drag on uh, the middle cube to get some uniform scaling. If you don't want a uniform scale, then just click on the uh, individual scale axis. You're trying to get another kind of look. And then if you find you still want to do some movement, you can always do that. All right, so that looks good. So I'll hit Q to switch over to my selection tool and exit out of the extrusion. So let's deselect. Let's go to object mode and take a look at this. All right, looks good. Looks like a gear.